Mr. Connolly, you're recognized for five minutes. Mr. Secretary, uh, under federal law, folks who are here uh, illegally uh, in this country aren't eligible for uh, Medicaid benefits, but some states have circumvented this uh, by using state funds to expand eligibility for their Medicaid programs to the entire population of undocumented uh, immigrants. Do you support those initiatives? Congressman, they haven't circumvented any law. They're just using their own state resources to do what they want for the population. Sure. Do state. you support those initiatives? Absolutely. You do. You support uh, expanding eligibility uh, like your own state of California has at a cost of $3 billion uh, to every person who's in the state illegally. The state has decided it wants to make sure as many of its people, if not all of them, are, have access to health care. So you just said you support that. Is that administration policy or your policy? You've asked, you asked me and I answered as an you individual. Do. Okay. Do you know if the administration has a position on it? Do they agree with you and support that policy? The administration wouldn't interfere with the state's decision to use its own money. Sure, but you said you support it. So does the administration support expanding eligibility for Medicaid programs to all undocumented immigrants? Congressman, as you know, we, we use federal dollars and we make sure we, the federal dollars are used properly. A state can use its state dollars okay. as it wishes. So you support it personally, but not necessarily the administration? No, I, I don't want to speak for the administration because uh, this, uh, we, we wouldn't have a position on how a state, your state, my state, uses its own dollars. Well, I'm, I'm sure you do. You would. I mean, there's all kinds of uh, positions the president has about what states are doing, but he hasn't spoken. Okay, then we can, you can ask the president. Okay. Uh, you started your testimony by talking about COVID, and you said we can now manage it like the flu. Um, yet there are 30 universities in this country that still have COVID-19 vaccine mandates uh, for students. Do you think it's time they ended those? They're managing it. I'm sorry? Uh, we're trying to manage uh, COVID, and everyone can manage it as they see fit. Well, that's certainly not how the administration uh, uh, conducted its policy during the pandemic. There were all kinds of mandates in various programs. So is there any authority, uh, health authority under your jurisdiction that at this point even recommends uh, universities to have COVID vaccine mandates? The recommendations principally put out by the CDC show best practices that uh, everyone could employ. Right. So do they recommend vaccine mandates at universities right now? The recommendations are pretty clear, and states can then do what they wish. Is that a yes or no for universities? It's uh, the states have uh, the ability to do what they believe is best. For so the just population. right now, you as the Secretary of Health and Human Services, uh, you have no opinion on whether it's uh, a good thing for these universities to continue their COVID vaccine mandates in May of 2024? Well, we've expressed what we think is best practice in those policies that have been articulated by the CDC. Okay, so is it best practice right now for a university to have a vaccine mandate for COVID or not? Well, the best practices are, have been set out by CDC, then a, a, any entity, whether it's a university or state, then decides how it wants to move forward. What's the best practice for a university? Should they have vaccine mandates now, yes or no? Oh, there, there are thousands of universities. I'm not going to speak for thousands of universities. Are you familiar with uh, the bio lab that was discovered in Reedley, California, uh, with link, that was set up uh, by, uh, with links to China? Uh, I'm familiar with it. This was uh, you know, discovered last year, uh, or maybe even sooner, uh, and uh, there were all kinds of pathogens there. It was actually set up by an international fugitive named Jesse Zhu, who's currently under uh, federal indictment. Local officials found pathogens like E. coli, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HIV, malaria, and others. And yet, when local officials reached out to the CDC uh, for help, they uh, refused to provide it. This is from a report from the Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party. It says, based on their initial observation in March 2023, local officials began to reach out to additional federal authorities for assistance. Local officials spent months repeatedly trying to obtain assistance from the CDC, uh, but the CDC refused to speak with them. And on a number of occasions, it was reported by local officials that the CDC hung up on them mid-conversation. So why didn't the CDC come in and try to help when local officials discovered the situation? I don't think that's an accurate representation of what CDC has done. They do. You, don't, you disagree with the, the committee's report? I don't think it's an accurate description of what CDC has I done. I see. Did the CDC test the samples they found at the lab? I'd have to get back to you on what the CDC precisely did. Because according to the report here, uh, the local officials asked them to test these samples, these dangerous pathogens, and they didn't do so. Does that sound inaccurate to you? I, I think you're leaving up a good part of the story. What part is that? I'd have to get back to you because I, I, I don't have a direct understanding right now. I, again, I came to testify on budget, but I can get back to you and tell, let you know what CDC did or didn't do. Do you have confidence right now that there aren't similar uh, labs with links to the Chinese Communist Party uh, in the United States? Uh, recognizing that these labs are licensed by the states, the 50 states, and not by the federal government, uh, it'd be 
difficult for me to answer that question. I don't, I don't, the states don't work for me. So, well, I mean, but you do have responsibility for public health in this country. And so right now, as the Secretary of Health and Human Services, do you have confidence that there aren't similar illegal biolabs like the one that was discovered in Reedley throughout this country? I, I don't know what every state has in its governance uh, rules for the establish, establishment of some of these labs. So if, you're, if the question is, do I have confidence that all the states are doing the right thing, I'd have to say, probably not. Thank you. I yield back.